Welcome to our discussion on the two-way ANOVA. Uh, we saw previously how to run a one-way analysis of variance where we had data that was basically categorized in only one way. Now we're going to look at a way to test when we have data categorized two ways. We're still testing whether or not there's a difference, uh, only now we have uh, two categories instead of one. A simple example would be the data in a table that are being categorized by gender and by the uh, level of lead in their blood. Similar to the example we saw where we just looked at blood lead levels, right? how much lead was in their blood, we're now going to also look at and see if gender has some bearing on the differences between the groups. So basically we're saying is the average amount of lead different between this group, this group, this group, this one, this one, and this one, right? We have six groups that we're testing now instead of three. We also have to worry about an interaction, and that is when there's something going on between the two categories. So in this case, is there some sort of interaction that's happening between levels of lead and gender? And in order to test that, you just do a simple interaction plot. What these dots represent are the averages of each of the groups, right? So the female group that was in the low lead blood level had an average of right around 97. And then the medium group had an average up here. But the high group had an average way down here, right? Then we look at the, the men. Their low lead group had an average here, which you can see over in the table, right? And then it dropped to 91 and then up to 95. When you're testing for an interaction, what you're looking for is the two graphs, in this case male and female, should be roughly parallel. And if they're roughly parallel, then there is no interaction. If they deviate um, drastically enough from parallel, in your opinion, then there is an interaction. Now I would look at this and say these are not parallel. This this last leg really messes with things and I would think that there's an interaction between the two. So as we said an interaction effect is, is suggested if the line segments are far from being parallel. And the problem is far from being parallel is a subjective thing. No interaction is suggested if the line segments are approximately parallel. Again, kind of a subjective thing. From our graph, it definitely appears that there is an interaction effect. And normally, if there's an interaction effect, you would just stop. You wouldn't run any other analyses. But we're going to continue on. Requirements for a two-way ANOVA. For each cell, the sample values have to come from a population with a distribution that is approximately normal. The populations uh, should have the same variances. The samples are supposed to be simple random samples. The samples need to be independent of each other. Uh, the sample values are categorized in only two ways now instead of one way like we saw in the previous one. And all the cells have to have the same number of sample values, i.e. a balanced design. There are other methods for uh, conducting a two-way ANOVA where you have different sample sizes. And what we mean is if we looked at these six categories, right, there's the same number of samples in each. And if you go back and look at the raw data, you'll notice that we have five samples in each. So it's what's called a balanced design. We have enough, we have the same amount in each of the categories. And like I said, um, we can deal with, um, there are tests as we can run when they aren't balanced but we're only going to be doing balanced ones here. Okay, uh, technology is the way to go with this. You don't even want to bother trying to do these things by hand. The first thing you always want to do is test for a interaction. And the null hypothesis is that there is no interaction. So you're hoping, right, you're hoping that you fail to reject because you need no interaction. And then step two is if we conclude that there is no interaction effect, we can proceed and move on to testing if there's a row effect or a column effect. And we're using the F distribution for this just like we have with the other ones.
here's kind of a visualization of what's going on. The first thing we test is, is there an interaction effect? And if there is, we're done. We can't do anything. Just stop. There's nothing else to do. But if there is no interaction, then you can go on and test to see if there is an inter a row effect or a column effect. Meaning, how you're categorized with the row variable somehow influences your average versus how you're categorized with the column variable somehow um, you know, influences how what your average is. Now given our previous set of IQ scores we're going to run a two-way ANOVA and we're going to use alpha to be 0.05. We run through our requirements. For each cell the sample values appear to be from a normally distributed population i.e. if you ran normal quantile plots on each of those six cells, right, so each of those sets of five pieces of data, they would seem normal enough. If you calculate the six variances for those five sets of data, you can see that there's quite a difference, especially this one's lower than the others, and this one is hugely higher than the others. That's a problem, right? We might have some reservations that the population variances are equal. But for the purposes of this example, example, we're going to continue on as if they are equal enough. They're simple random, they're independent, they're categorized in two ways, they all have the same number of values, right? They all have a sample of five. So we're good to go. Throw it into technology, and these are the results we get. The first thing you always look at, the interaction effect. So there's your test statistic and your p-value for your interaction effect. Remember, when we're talking about an interaction, the null is that we have no interaction. And because our p-value is greater than alpha, right, p is bigger than alpha, implies fail to reject. So even though the uh, interaction graph seemed to show an interaction because those two lines were not really parallel at all, when we run the numbers, we fail to reject the null, and therefore we have to go along with the assumption that there is, in fact, no interaction. So I guess those two lines just weren't unparallel enough. Right? Remember I told you it's kind of a subjective thing, so that's why you've got to run the numbers and see what happens. Now that we've seen that there is no interaction, we can move on and look at what happens with the row and um, column. The row was gender. The row effect seems to have no effect, right? That's a huge P. And gender, sorry, sorry, that was gender, and then the lead amount also seems to have no effect, another huge P. So what does that mean? Well, the first thing we tested was interaction. There was no interaction, so we can go ahead and um, move on and test the other two. So the next thing we're testing for is, you can see we have two different null hypotheses because we're basically running two different tests. The first is there are no effects from rho and there are no effects from uh, the column with the p-value of 0.79 we fail to reject that null hypothesis so the evidence kind of implies that there are no effects right there is not enough evidence to warrant rejection of the null so there's not enough evidence to think that there is an effect from gender and similarly when we tested the columns we got a p-value of 0.9 so there was also not enough evidence to support the alternative, right, that there is an effect from blood level. So it looks like neither gender nor level of uh, lead in your blood has an effect on your IQ. And that's what this is saying, right? The final interpretation is based on our sample data, we conclude that IQ scores do not appear to be affected by either gender or the level of lead in your blood. A caution, one last caution is remember, you have to test for that interaction first. 
because if there is an interaction you cannot see if one or the other is actually doing the cause right if there's some sort of interaction the row and the column factors are somehow working together then you can't tell if it's just the row that's having an effect or just the column that's having an effect so the first thing you always have to test is for that interaction and you should always test both by running the numbers and by looking at the graph because by looking at that graph you probably would have thought well there is an interaction and so even though it didn't come back with an interaction from the numbers you then get non-significant results and it, it's all going together right you, there seemed to be an interaction even though we didn't get one statistically and then we don't get an effect from either gender or lead levels but we had that really bad uh, variances in two of our cells so just all over this test is crap right we it just it's just bad I mean it's a learning it's an example tool here but in the real world we wouldn't even want to report anything it's just bad 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 let's look at another example and how we can do this in technology here I've added some data into StatCrunch uh, and this is what you have to do you have to have all of your um, data values that are being compared in one column and then you have to have your uh, row and column designation similar to what we did with the one way ANOVA where we just had the one factor and one now we have to have two right because our data is now being categorized two ways gender and age right so these are males under 30 and then these down here are males over 30 and then as we uh, pan down we can see we have females under 30 and females over 30 and of course you have to have the same amount in each of those categories because if you don't it won't run the stats for you. Stat, ANOVA, we're now doing a two-way ANOVA. Responses, those are the things that are being um, compared and we're comparing pulses. The row factor, that's going to be gender, really doesn't matter which way you go. Column factor, I'll let that be age. I want to plot, plot the interactions. I want to display the means. I also want to compute my uh, Tukey pairwise test. Hit compute. The first thing it gives you is all the displays. Here's my ANOVA table. The first thing we have to check is interaction. Is there an interaction, right? The null hypothesis is no interaction. There is no interaction. This is less than 5%, right? If we set alpha to be 5%, then we would reject the null and say that there is an interaction and we'd be done. We wouldn't even look at anything else. Okay? So in the real world we'd be done. We wouldn't wouldn't even consider looking at the interactions between the other things. But just as a learning tool, if we pretend that this was bigger than five, so we would fail to reject and we would say yes, there is no interaction still, then we would move on and look at each of the other two. And we would see that gender has a very, very small p-value. Remember the, the null hypothesis is no effect from gender so we would re reject that and say that gender does have an effect on pulse rate. Then we would look at age and the null hypothesis is, is you know no effect and here we fail to reject so age doesn't seem to have an effect. Gender does, age doesn't according to our results. If we look at the means tables we can look at the average pulse rate for all of these different um, categories and we can see quite a difference between female and male right the males are all pretty much at 68 but the females are up here higher at especially this one here that's probably what's causing the difference and in fact the two key is going to look at all those pairwise and it's going to compare females over 30 to the other things right females under and the two males and we can see here we're getting close to a significance. Then we look at females under 30. Remember here was the females under 30 that seemed to be a lot higher than everybody else. And we compare those to both males over 30 and males under 30. We get those significant results for both of them. And that's why we saw um, that gender had a difference. And then when we check males over 30 versus male under 30, no difference. Okay, so that goes back and tells us that when we see this uh, gender difference, it's really coming from the females under 30 that are being different from the males. The females over 30 are not different, right, from the males.
That's how we would interpret that. If we were able to, remember we couldn't because the inter there was an interaction effect. And if we page through here, we can see the graph. And oh, that's kind of parallel. Maybe that would be OK. Remember, we were just barely under 5%. And then this one, that one looks a lot worse. And that's probably where the interaction was coming from. OK, that's a two-way ANOVA, guys. Not too complicated, not too hard. Just throw it into technology and get your answers.